Hey guys and welcome back to another GGF LAN video review. Today we've got some uh, new products from Gigabyte, some new motherboards. And uh, as something different today, we are actually going to have the head admin of GGF LAN here in Brisbane uh, give you a rundown on them. So uh, this is Stuart and uh, enjoy. Alrighty guys, today I'll start off with the G1 Assassin 2 motherboard. Uh, this is fairly new from uh, Gigabyte. Uh, it comes with the F7 BIOS already on it, so if you do have a newer Intel chip, you won't have to worry about trying to get that new BIOS on. Alrighty, this is Socket 2011 X79. Uh, a few features, it has the kill nick on it, uh, which saves you having to uh, fork out extra money to get that physical nick that was released uh, previously. Comes with creative audio, 3D power, 3D BIOS. Um, and let's look at the sides, not much there, just the uh, language information. And there's everything on the back, as you can see on the TV. We've taken a shot of the back, uh, so we'll go through everything there. And on the other side, it's yeah, pretty much nothing else there either. Alrighty, I'll open it up and we can see what's inside. Alright, so there's the board itself. Comes in a nice sort of soft perspex window. Just put that over there. Alrighty, inside the main compartment. We have a sticker sheet like that, some bullets, bullet holes and the G1 killer. We have a sticker that says the latest BIOS has been installed. Alright, we have a poster you can hang in your room or wherever you like. We have a Gigabyte case badge. The main manual, the Wi-Fi manual, and it looks like that comes in two languages, and then just a guidebook as well. So you got those. We have a bunch of CDs. We got one for the main driver set and one for the Wi-Fi uh, Bluetooth uh, add-on kit. All right, there is your Bluetooth Wi-Fi add-on kit. It's just a it looks like a PCI Express one by card that um, gives you Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. These are the two antennas for it. A few SATA cables. The front bay USB 3, which uh, connects uh, uh, is, uh, straight onto the uh, motherboard header. IO shield, it's got G1 killer logo on the back. Alrighty, tri SLI bracket. Uh, there's your crossfire bracket and your single SLI bracket and this looks like a USB extender by the looks of it. Alright that's everything in the box. Alright now over to the board. Alright so there's the board itself. Alright there's the back panel. Alrighty, I'll refer this to uh, what's on the TV. I'll just go around sort of a clockwise um, of the different components on the board. Um, first off, it's X79 uh, chipset, socket uh, 2011. We have quad channel memory, which does your 1066 all the way to 2400. We have your 24 pin power front USB, where is your SATA on the front there, on the side. We have the all these three, the two blacks and the white, are all of the Intel chipset. The top two are SATA 3, 6 gig. The bottom or lower four are your SATA 2, 3 gig. And these two grey ones on their own are on the Marvel controller. They also run at SATA 3, 6 gig. Um, moving around the bottom, I believe there's a total of five fan headers all up on this board. We have your front panel connectors, your USB and whatnot. Um, for the PCI Express layouts, we have your three greens here. They're all physically 16 by slots, 
but um, electrically the, the middle one is 8 by it's actually actually physically an 8 by I can see there the pins actually only go halfway and then the top one and the last one are full 16 by slots we have two 1 by slots and we have your standard PCI slot now I do believe that the three greens are your, your new PCIe 3.0 standard and then the two black 1 bys are just 2.0 alright moving on to the audio um, this does have an advanced creative chip on it. It's also got this little sort of wire sort of shielding around it. This is just a power interface shielding for better quality audio. All right, moving up on the board, we have a Killer Nick uh, 2100. This will give you sort of advanced, advanced pings and sort of better performance design for gaming. If you look up on the screen here, it gives you some more info on the, the back of the box. Alright, moving up on the board, I believe it was a 16 phase power design along the top there. We have our heatsink along the top, it sort of looks like a, in a, sort of a line of a, a cannon or something. And then if you look at the one below, it's sort of in the shape of a gun. Down there, And it does actually have a sticker on there, I don't know if you'll grab, be able to see that in the shot. It actually says that this is not a weapon and it cannot be assembled as a firearm, which is kind of kind of funny to see that on there, but I guess I guess they gotta think of everything. Alright, now moving on to the back ports. We start off with your USB and you have your keyboard and mouse combo PS2. Now all these red ones I believe are your standard USB 2, but they have the extra power for charging devices when the system is off. We've got your standard uh, two black USB 2, or just your original USB 2. You have your two eSATA, which is still good to see those on there. You have two USB 3 on the back. There's your audio um, in and out connectors with your optical as well. We have the network adapter, which goes through the, uh, the killer nick. Now onto this little, um, this little header here. The first little round button is your clear CMOS. Um, I do kind of like how that is a really small button. It's not sort of easily hit like these larger ones that you see on other boards are just a large button. Now this uh, purple and a light green button is your switch BIOS. So you can switch between BIOS 1, BIOS 2 sort of um, if something happens to BIOS 1. And then the button above it, as, as it says, that's your OC button. So you can have predefined settings in the BIOS and you can either boot with the OC button or just boot into standard mode. Um, alrighty, I think that's everything for now. I'll just go on to the back. As, as you can see, it's got your X79, just the uh, back plate on there. Some extra screws, screws just to hold in the, uh, the heat sinks. But I think that's it on the board overview. You've got your PCI Express, uh, sorry not PCI Express, your uh, CPU 8 pin power there. Um, and it just only needs one of those. So yeah, that's it for the board. Uh, for now, we'll just cut to another video. We'll hook it all up to a system and show you the new 3D BIOS. All right, we'll be back soon. Alrighty, welcome back, guys. Uh, as I said before, I put this board all together now on our on our awesome little test bench. So this is the G1 Assassin 2 Socket 2011 board running on this G1 Killer test bench. Now in-house modder Dan. Uh, Screen name of Schizo B1 has set up this awesome little, uh, what, what, what I can say it is pretty much a water cooled test bench. Uh, we're going to use this for our uh, rest of our Gigabyte products. So he's done this in 24 hours, so this is pretty sweet. Uh, it makes the systems just look epic. We've also got a Gigabyte 680 in here as well, um, which has been sent to us uh, along with some other gear. So I'll get into the uh, into the BIOS now, which you can see up here. So straight away after hitting delete or F2, this is what you get presented with in the first screen of the BIOS. As you can see, it, it's sort of cycling through. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. It's cycling through different spots. So I could probably say sort of feature spots or hot spots on the board. So I'll just randomly grab one. Um, so this sort of mode with this, it might be a bit new to some people, but this is sort of like sort of your, your noob mode because it's sort of a whole new sort of BIOS feature and without knowing what to do, first thing you're going to do is sort of just start clicking around. So uh, I, I haven't dealt too much with these newer BIOSes, so if I wanted to overclock the CPU, I would say click on the CPU and straight away you're represented with, with your typical sort of CPU features, your memory timings and voltages. So these are sort of sliding bars and settings you can change with minimum and maximums in place. 
So if I close that and if I move around the list, the next thing I can click on is the SATA. So we've got options for the SATA, disable them, change them to RAID, uh, IDE mode and whatnot. I don't know how well that'll show up. Oh, you can see that all right. Okay, next one I'll move around to additional BIOS features. So you've got things like boot up screen, Intel VT, VTD, all your fan settings uh, and other things like that. Moving along, what's next we can check on? We can go our slot configuration. So it just comes up with uh, first display device and PCI ROM priority. So not too much there. And the next looks to be our, our rear uh, I.O. ports and it's just eSATA controller, what mode that is and different uh, settings for the USB. So up the top in right hand corner I found out if you click on the 3D BIOS symbol you can look at the real time clock speed and the memory speed as well. So as you can see now it's sort of running about 3.9. I have got an overclock on this so I'll go in and have a look what it is. So you can also click on this little sort of looks like a refresh button but it just rotates the board to a different view. All right, so this is sort of your basic mode to go into your sort of your advanced setting, sorry, that are sort of with your older boards. We'll hit escape, and now this is sort of what, what most people are accustomed to with, uh, with the older award BIOS system setup. So first off, we have our MIT settings. These are like all your overclocking features, your memory voltages, things like that. Moving across to the right, we have system settings. This is sort of information of uh, the BIOS, BIOS date, things like that. Moving across the BIOS features, these are all your, your boot options, your full screen logo, uh, first display device, your VTD, uh, virtual uh, virtualization technology and whatnot. Now we've got peripherals, this is things like enable disable sound, USB 3, uh, what devices you have plugged in and your Marvel uh, SATA 6 controller. Moving over, we have our power management, so this is things like wake up, power on by keyboard, and uh, soft off button control and then we just got save, exit, uh, load optimized defaults. So we'll go back around to the MIT, uh, we'll sort of focus on this, uh, the overclocking features. If I scroll down to PC Health, this gives us the info on sort of our voltages, our fan speeds and our temperatures. So this is pretty important for when you're doing your overclockings and things like that. I can also go up to the top and just go to the MIT current settings. This is handy to see what we're running at now. <coughs> so if you have a look, we're running at 3.9 is our turbo, which I think is the stock setting it sets to, and 3.3 is the, uh, the stock non-turbo. So if I hit escape there, let's go down to advanced frequency settings. All right, so. I'll just set this back to default and we'll do a quick uh, overclock to show you just how simple this is to overclock this board. So these are your default settings here. So you've got auto for the uh, PCI clock, the multiplier is set to 33 and then your extreme memory profile is disabled. So I'll just go to the top to do a simple, simple overclock. We'll set this to manual, leave the host clock at 100. We don't really want to change this. This uh, will affect your PCI Express bus and we want to leave our VGAs uh, as they are. Scroll down to CPU clock ratio, I'll try 45. Um, I tried this before straight off the bat and this seems to be a good sort of sweet spot for now. We are leaving the all the vehicles at auto so they will be adjusted according to what, what ratio we have the CPU clock. For more advanced uh, higher clocks, you will have to go into the vehicle settings and just adjust those higher or lower to get the most uh, most advanced clock you'll need. And then for our extreme memory, pro memory profile, I'll set that to one. Our RAM is 1866 megahertz, but I'll set that to 1600 just so we're not getting any um, interference with memory while I'm um, in Windows. So I'm gonna save that now. F10 is saved, hit yes. So that'll now boot up into Windows. We'll just have, have a look and see what the board looks like on first boot when it comes up. All right, there we go. So pretty much full screen logo. I've left that on. You've got your options down the bottom, tab, N key, F12, delete and whatnot. Okay, now it's booting Windows. All righty, so that's straight into Windows now. That was pretty quick. We do have an SSD in this system, so it is it is lightning fast. So, 
Okay, so we'll start up um, CPU-Z. I did download the G1 uh, version of this. It, um, it does look pretty fancy and it sort of matches the theme. So as you can see, we've got a 3960X running in this. It is running at uh, 1.2 gig because Windows is for throttling it down. I'll see if I can change that and get that up to a get that up to a 4.5, which it should be. I'll just go to a, go to our Limpack on there. I'll put that on. I do have to sort of wait for a minute for that to monitor. But while that's running, I uh, I did run a 3D Mark score before just to see how uh, just to see how stable this was. We got a pretty good score for sort of straight off the bat we haven't really done any tweaking so that's the performance score of 1050 10555 I have turned physics off because this is a NVIDIA chip and physics on would give it a bit more of an advantage I believe so that's with 1680 it is the uh, Gigabyte Windforce OC edition so that was great so if you whacked in a second card for this no doubt you'd be able to get up to 18s 19s with a bit more tweaking but I feel this chip this 3960X could go a lot higher because I'm at 4.5 with just basic settings. So let's see how we're going now. Monitoring for a minute. It's got 10 seconds to go. And then we should see these settings go up to a go up to 4.5. Oops, no, that didn't work. Alright, let's have a look. So if we head over to the clock speed, so that's 4.5 now. As you can see, the multiplier is 45, core is 1.28, so that's just set at default settings. Uh, for some extreme overclocking, some people have had these at 1.5, so as you can see, we have a lot of room to play with, and we're only at 4.5, so we can definitely get this a lot higher. Okay, so I've just seen this board run pretty sweet at 4.5. Uh, that was pretty easy to do, so I'm sure many people get much, much, much higher, and I believe that people have done that quite easily. So this is a great board for overclocking, and it's got plenty of features you need. We've only got one card in this now. Uh, we put this gigabyte in for this, for this review, but we did have three 580s in this before. Uh, it ran that no troubles at all. So we had a pretty B system in there before. It's, um, it's a B system now. So this is a great board by Gigabyte. And, uh, and that's, that's it. So stay tuned for the uh, next review.